Well, welcome back for another ABF teaching. Good to be here with you. I want to ask you to turn in your Bibles to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. On September 11th, 2001, two planes flew into the Twin Towers, killing almost 3,000 people. It changed our nation forever. In 2004, a massive tsunami hit the coast of Indonesia, killing 200,000 people. And then in 2005, many of us, of course, remember Hurricane Katrina, which killed about 2,000 people and led millions of people to be homeless. And then in 2010, there was a massive earthquake in Haiti that killed anywhere from 100 to 200,000 people, maybe even more. And now we face another disaster, the coronavirus pandemic, which up until this point worldwide has killed 128,000 people. Governor Cuomo recently made a remark in one of his news briefings. He said that it seems as if these disasters and pandemics are escalating in recent history. When we consider these disasters, when we hear comments like that from governors and other people, it helps us to think about what Christ warned about, about how these type of things will escalate like birth pains in a woman becoming more frequent, becoming more intense over time. It also reminds us of what Jesus said in Luke 21, 11, where he said, there will be great earthquakes and in various places, famines and pestilences, and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. Now, when we think about verses like that, and when we go through what we're going through, it causes us to wonder, are we near the end? Are we in the end? Is this in some way the beginning of the end? Well, believe it or not, we are not the first people to ask that question. 2,000 years ago, believers were asking that very question. In particular, the Thessalonians. Someone had come into their church or communicated with their church and told them that the end times were upon them. Whether it was false teachers, we're not quite sure who it was, but they had deceived them in some way and taught them that the day of the Lord was now occurring. The day of the Lord was now occurring. Now, the day of the Lord is God's final judgment on the earth. It's talked about all throughout the Old Testament, and it is primarily and most vividly described in the book of Revelation. The day of the Lord that's talked about all throughout the Bible is that seven-year period of tribulation that God pours out his wrath and judgment on the earth. In particular, the day of the Lord is the last half of that seven-year tribulation. And so as a result of hearing this, the Thessalonians were deeply disturbed. They were deeply shaken by this. And so Paul writes them and he says, hold on, that event that day of the Lord, that tribulation, that final judgment of God, it isn't going to occur until two major events happen first. And so to see what those two major events are, I want to invite you to read with me 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, starting in verse 1. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, we ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by a spirit, meaning a teaching, or a spoken word or a letter seeming to be from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless, number one, the rebellion comes first, and number two, the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, 
who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Very interesting. Paul here says, guys, do not be so quickly shaken by this. Don't be so disturbed by this bad, very bad, very false, very sensational teaching about the end times. All of it being designed to play on your fears. Don't be quickly shaken by stuff like this, Paul says. And boy, nothing has changed, has it? We have the same thing. You know, we've got, you've seen these end time books out there and, and they've got lightning, you know, usually coming down and fire and, and, and planes crashing and the, the lettering on the book is, is red and bold and, and all of it is designed to play on our fears and it appeals to our curiosities. But so much of it is biblically inaccurate. And so to allay their fears, Paul says, I want to give you the proper order of events so that you're not disturbed, so that you don't lack peace. The first thing that he says that needs to occur is the great rebellion. He says that in verse 3. For that day will not come unless, he says, the rebellion comes first. The rebellion, a massive worldwide rebellion is going to happen. You say, what type of rebellion is this? Well, um, the word rebellion in the Greek is apostasia, from which we get the word apostasy. Now, an apostasy is not a rebellion of unbelievers. It's a rebellion of believers. In the end times, there is going to be a massive worldwide defection from the faith. Many people will stop being Christians. They never were Christians. They claimed to be Christians, but they were pretenders, they were posers, and they weren't the genuine thing. And as a result of being persecuted, because there's going to be a massive persecution of Christians in the end times, as a result of that, many people who just kind of casually go to church or casually call themselves Christians are just going to say, I'm out. I'm not a Christian. I don't want to have to endure this. And so Paul says there is going to be an apostasia, a falling away from the faith, a massive one. He calls it the rebellion, not just a rebellion, but the rebellion. Christ refers to the same thing in Matthew chapter 24, verse 10, where he says, and then many will fall away. Jesus is talking about the end times in Matthew 24. He's talking about how Christians are going to be severely persecuted for his namesake. And then he says, and many will fall away and betray one another, and hate one another. And Paul is saying, listen, guys, Thessalonians, this hasn't happened yet. This massive rebellion, this apostasy has not occurred yet, so why would you think that you're in the end times? And then secondly, he says, the Antichrist has not showed up on the world stage. Look at verse 3. For that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed. Now, when Paul says the man of lawlessness, this son of destruction, those are all phrases for the Antichrist. The Antichrist. In the book of Revelation, and Jesus as well taught that a man is going to appear, he's going to be the Antichrist, the man of lawlessness, and he is going to bring world unity. He's going to bring world peace. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 24 that the world is going to be saying peace and safety. Finally, finally, the world is one. There's peace, there's safety, there's no war, there's no divisions, and everything looks like it's going to be headed in the right direction for the world. But what is going to happen is that this Antichrist, this man of lawlessness, is going to become so full of himself for accomplishing what no other person has been able to accomplish in the history of the world, that he is literally going to go to the temple in Jerusalem, sit down on a throne, and proclaim himself to be God. And Daniel and Jesus refer to this act as the abomination of desolation. 
And Paul's saying to the Thessalonians, has this happened yet? This hasn't happened yet. Don't worry. Don't be shaken. Don't be easily disturbed by some pandemic. Don't be easily disturbed by an earthquake or a hurricane or some world event that occurs thinking that the end is, is, is near or maybe we're in the end because God has a timeline. He has an order of events that he has clearly spelled out in his word for us. Now, having said all of that, just because COVID-19 is not some definitive marker that we are in the end times, it doesn't mean that God wants us to ignore it. God does not want us to ignore this. God wants us to see in this event and in events like this, a foreshadowing of the judgment that is to come. A foretaste of the wrath and the judgment of the day of the Lord that is to come. He wants us to see that. Whether it's COVID or a tsunami or an earthquake, all of this teaches us that God can and God will bring the world to its knees very quickly. But there's hope. There's good news. And the good news is that if you believe in Jesus Christ, if you have placed your faith in him, if you've repented of your self-righteousness and your attempts to make yourself righteous, if you've put all that behind you like Paul did in Philippians 3, all of that is trash, and you've rejected yourself and accepted the sacrifice of Jesus Christ by faith, the Bible says you will be protected from the wrath that is to come. That's good news, and so we celebrate that, and we comfort one another with those words. So, three things. Don't be quickly shaken by really bad sensational teaching or by an event like what we're going through. That's the first thing. Number two, know God's timeline. Know the order of events that he has clearly spelled out in his word about the end times so that we won't lack peace. And then number three, when a disaster like this occurs, let it remind you of the wrath, the greater wrath that is to come. And let it change you. And let it humble you. And let it prepare you. Lord bless you. Thanks for listening.